Hi everyone, Rybone here, back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team, and this week we're taking on EDR cannibalism. What is EDR cannibalism? Well, what if I was able to go get a piece of software, like an EDR software that's trusted, and install it on a host, much like the remote management utilities we see out there, and use that to either nullify the EDR that's on the host, or create some method of C2. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to take some trial EDRs, and we're going to first blow out a main EDR. Then we're going to create a C2 with an EDR. So it's an interesting concept. And what led me to this was originally I saw at Bushido token here indicating that threat actors were leveraging EDR and AV products as part of their attack life cycle. I saw that go by on Twitter and I'm like, okay, that's interesting that they're starting to pick up on this red team technique. But then at Crude Solutions here took it way further with this EDR on EDR violence. This is a pretty cool uh, method, I'll say, and they've illustrated it pretty well, the different ones out there. So pretty neat. Go check that out. Um, both of these, you know, it's very interesting that we're starting to see threat, ad threat actors use this as part of their toolkit. So us as Purple Teamers have to know how to detect these things, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, before we start this, I just want to be clear that there's the EDR vendors are doing nothing wrong here. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do, providing trials of their software, much like the remote management utilities. So don't think that I'm saying that these EDR vendors are doing anything wrong. They're not. This is up to you. It's your environment. You have to know what normal is. So if you see an EDR installed that's not yours, just realize it's legitimate software. It's going to get by most EDR solutions. All right. So let's start with, we'll take a look at our Win10 Host 8. Win10 Host 8 is a standard Windows 10, and I have a local administrator, Reed Richards here. And we can just do who am I to verify that. And I'm Hacking Lab Reed Richards. I have compromised an administrative user. Very, very common, right? You compromise a user, you send in a fish, you get some kind of compromise. Start with that administrative user. Now, what do I do next? Well, this host has Cortex XDR on it, and it's been eating my lunch. So I want Cortex XDR to go away. Well, what can I do? I can download Cisco AMP. And go get a trial of Cisco AMP, and I can download Cisco AMP, and I can nullify Cortex XDR. And that's what we're going to do. But first, I need something to be able to nullify Cortex XDR. And I need a file hash, because what we're going to use is the hash blocking mechanism of Cisco AMP to stop Cortex XDR. So we'll do get file hash. We're just going to get sciserver.exe right here. And this will give us our hash. We're going to take our hash and we're going to copy that out. So I'll copy that out to a location, right? Now I'm going to go into the AMP console, assuming I've already got a trial and I've already been able to download my agent. I'm going to go ahead and we'll start the AMP install here. This can take a few minutes. And I will be pausing fairly frequently throughout this video this week as a lot of these things take a few minutes to do installs. And I don't think you guys want to watch the install process in a lot of cases. So we're in our AMP console here. I simply went and downloaded a Windows connector, just like you just saw. And then I go into Outbreak Control and I go into Blocked Applications. And then I go edit here and I simply add the SHA-256 of what I want blocked. Now that 712, this is the hash of sciserver.exe. That hash basically will stop the sciserver ex executable from running at the time that this policy uh, takes place. Either you can shut down the host and make it immediate or it eventually will kill it off. So. We've got our host installed here. We just need to take a look at that one more time. 
and secure Cisco secure endpoint has completed. We'll just close that off. And then we'll take a look over here one more time. We can see it's connecting. And we should have events here. And we can see this one is downloading right here, right? So it's setting itself up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reboot Win 10 Host 8 here. I'm just going to pause the video and reboot it. And then I will show you guys the aftermath of what will happen. So I'm going to pause here and then we'll, we will uh, come right back. All right. And we're back. So what happened after the reboot? If we come down here and we look at Cortex, you can see it's red, which basically that means it is disabled or non-functional. We take a look at the console here. You will see it is basically dead. Further proof that this guy is dead. We go into PowerShell. We'll just do our invoke Mimikatz test. And notice what will happen. We get name of a commandlet. We basically have nullified Cortex XDR by installing Cisco AMP. Now, if we take a look at the AMP console, we can see right here, Sci Server, which is the EDR of choice, is blocked. So it blocked the executable based on the hash that I gave it. This is not crazy. For an adversary to do this, not that hard. All they have to do is have administrative control of an endpoint and a legitimate trial software from one of these vendors. Okay, so that is Cisco AMP uh, and the nullification of, of uh, Palo Alto XDR. We're now going to take a look at a method of creating kind of a base C2 and maybe doing some compromise with it. So I'm going to pause the video right here, revert this host, and when we come back, We'll take a look at Trend Micro. All right, so we're back. Now we're going to take a look at Trend Micro. So I was able to get a, a trial of Trend Micro Vision 1. So we're going to go ahead and install the Trend Micro Vision 1 installer. And then we'll pause and come right back. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here to Windows 10 Host 8. And this one takes a little while, so I'm going to pause it once we get going here. So we'll get Trend Micro Endpoint Basecamp going. And this is starting. There we go. This one takes a while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it here, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we now have Trend Micro installed. Notice. Cortex XDR right here didn't do anything. Of course, Defender doesn't do anything because this is legitimate software. So what can we do with this? One of the first things we can do with this is we can do some remediation work. Well, what do you think remediation work could be? There's a lot of things that you can do with remediation when it is an EDR type thing. If I want to, I could isolate the endpoint. Okay, so I've nuked it. But what that does do if I isolate the endpoint is that means that Cortex, as well as the SIM agent, will not communicate back. And then I could start a remote shell and do some kind of damage. Um, as far as C2 is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and start a remote shell on this host. Now, this takes flat forever in most cases. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and we'll come back once this remote shell has established. All right, our remote shell has established now. So we have remote connection to this host, Cortex XDR is there, and it hasn't done anything. Now it's not a pure remote shell, but it does have some interesting things you can do. You can run PS, you can get all of the running processes. You can also kill a process. So if you go kill, it will kill a process. But one of the more interesting things that I saw here was memory dump. Well, what's a memory dump got in credentials? If you don't have credential guard turned on and you do a memory dump and you can pull it back, that means that you can at least get local credentials with volatility. You might be able to get, if you use memprocfs, get full credentials. So this is an interesting piece to do, but that's it for the red this week. We have shown 
EDR doing violence to other EDRs. We showed a, uh, a cannibalism of Cortex XDR, and now we've got a remote shell that we can execute commands. It may not be perfect, but it's enough that we can do some things with it. All right, so that is the red. Let's take a look at the blue. So we need to detect the installation of these. First off, you got to know what EDR is in your environment and which one isn't, right? If you know what EDRs are in your environment, you can spot the weird ones. So we're going to jump over here to our Elastic Sim, and we're going to look first for our Cisco images. So we'll do event code 7045, which is a service install. And then we're going to look for ANC CL and SFC. And we can see right here, this is the installation of Cisco AMP. So right here, if you take a look, you can see ANC RCL. This is AMP endpoint isolation. And there's SFC.exe right there. So this is our AMP installation. If you see this happening in your environment, that means AMP is installed. This is also the kernel mode driver installation for AMP isolation. That should not be happening in your environment if you're not a Cisco AMP shop or a Cisco secure client shop, right? The next thing you can do, you can look for driver install. So we'll do event code six, and then we're going to look for the device name containing sys. Oh, so we'll just do this right here. Now, this is a Sysmon event ID, so you do need Sysmon. But right there, you can see the Cisco AMP heuristics driver, Cisco SAM, Cisco AMP Ceph W driver. This is the installation of Cisco AMP's driver. This is how we are able to terminate and block things with Cisco Secure Client, right? Because it has a kernel mode driver. That's basically what this boils down to. Okay. So the next one, Trend Micro. Now, Trend Micro, we didn't technically install an EDR. We installed something that gave us C2. So there's not really a driver install there, at least for the tool that we use. Now, if you add on their protection, you will see a driver come in. But if we just simply look for event code 7045 and the service name containing Trend, we can see Trend Micro endpoint Basecamp installed right there. Should you have either of these installed if your EDR is Palo Alto XDR or CrowdStrike or any of those names? The answer is no. This is a remote management solution or something that adversaries are going to use, right? Now, if we get into the host being isolated, then you are looking at forensic artifacts to find this stuff, right? You're looking at the host itself. You're looking at uh, execution with prefetch or shim cache. You're looking at uh, event logs on the host itself. So just make sure that if you see something th like this, you act fairly quickly. Because if they isolate that host, it will no longer send to SIM. It will also no longer send to its cloud-based EDR. So these are dangerous. All right. That's it for this week. Once again, hack the planet to defend better. Trying to pillage on the